Finally, let me answer the question I've been asked the most over the years, how to learn causal inference. And actually, I'm going to go further than this. I'm going to show you how to learn causal inference from scratch, for free, and on your own. Arguably, causal inference is the most important skills you have to learn today if you are interested into data science for two main reasons. First, almost every decision we make in a company at the country level personally relate on causal assumptions. Hence, it's tremendously useful. It's everywhere. The second reason why it's tremendously useful to know causal inference is because it remains a very niche topic. Very few people are actually expert on this topic. Hence, if you put a little bit of effort, at least to go through the first part that I'm going to show you, you will be able to have a big asset that you can use on the job market, but also that will be, be useful on your personal life during discussions while you read the news and exchange potentially on social media. This self-study guide is composed only by free resources, and that does not mean that it, those are secondary resources. Those are the cutting edge best resources that I also recommend to my master students in the universities I teach. This guide is composed by six sections. First, of course, we are going to discover what is causal inference and what are the key concepts you should learn. No prerequisites are required to understand this section. Then we are going to talk about technical tools. Basically, you will need two things to go further. First, statistics and second, some programming language or some statistical tool. Third, we are going to talk about randomized experiments or A-B testing. And then we are going to discuss in the fourth section, what can we do when we cannot do randomized experiments or when they are not ideal? Then I will suggest and illustrate, give examples, provide material to actually create your first causal inference project that you could be able to market, to include in your project portfolio, allowing you to show actual useful results and skills when you are looking for a job. Finally, I'll close this guide and mention a few advanced topics that you can look at later on. Each section will start with a quick overview to understand and grasp the idea of the section, and then I'll refer to some references. Those references are usually full of examples of codes, Python code mostly, so you will really be able to understand the theory, but also practice and get experience. Causal inference is interested about relating cause and effects, cause and consequences. It, it allows to answer why and what if. Those questions are tremendously useful for answering major questions we face today. From fighting climate change to our personal quest of happiness to strategic decisions or adds impact in a company. So the first thing you want to understand when you open this chapter, this topic of causal inference, is actually what we call the fundamental problem of causal inference. The fascinating thing and what, why it is such a useful topic is that it's not trivial at all to prove causality. Actually, you have no statistical test that will generally allow you to prove causality simply with a test. And this is due to the fact that the only way to perfectly measure a causal effect will be to have two parallel worlds. In one of the two worlds, you can observe a situation, and the other, you just change one thing at a time, and it allows you to see the counterfactual, the other world, without the treatment, the decision, maybe your ad spending for your products, maybe a new power plant, new solar panels, a new technology, lockdowns for COVID, or a new medicine. But as we don't have parallel worlds, usually many things are confounded together. Hence, it's very hard to disentangle all those factors and allow to pin down precisely the causal effect of some treatment. So here to open this chapter, I recommend you two videos that I produced myself to explain exactly those concepts and they are made for a broad audience without any prerequisite of statistical knowledge or data science or whatever. And note that this is not preventing us to do the things correctly and deeply. Those are exactly the same concepts and way I will present those concepts to engineers and even seasoned researchers in medical research. In addition, if you want to play with those concepts and already apply them in your daily life, in your job, you can actually use the app I created. It's a GPT-based app where you can share a fact, a graph, an article. It will use my framework to question the causality, the causal claim, and allow you 
first, to use this framework to better question the world, and third, to learn those concepts and eventually become independent from the app. Once that you master this foundation, you can put a bit of formalization, a theoretical framework that will be very useful to communicate and understand the rest of the material that will be showed to you in the other resources. The first one is the potential outcome model, which is the most widely used notation and language and framework to discuss about causal inference. Alongside this theoretical framework, you can also use a visual framework, visual representation tool to represent causal relationships with a graph, which are called the directed acyclic graphs. Those concepts are absolutely key and will allow you to better communicate and understand and visualize your causal problems. Once you have those foundations, well, you will need actually to, before implementing the methodologies, to master at least those two technical tools. The first tool you should master is actually the foundations in statistics, probability, and linear regressions. But don't be scared. You don't need to be a mathematician to go further. You just need to master the the foundations and be able to understand well and work with a linear regression. And good news, there is the perfect book chapter that is freely available to answer those questions and help you to understand exactly what you need to go further. Once you have the basic of linear regression and statistics, you should pay particular attention to two additional concepts. First, it's the concept of good and bad controls. Those concepts allow to understand for which variable you should control, you should include in your regression, and which you should not. In addition, the fixed effect model with panel data is also something that's tremendously useful and allow to address many problems related to causality. Well, now, of course, to run statistical model, you need a statistical tool, right? If you are already familiar with the program, able to do linear regressions and run those models, well, you can stick with it. However, my personal favorite will be Stata, Python, or R. Sure, those three requires to be able to code, but, well, coding is tremendously useful today, and it's more and more accessible particularly due to the availability of ChatGPT, able to help you explain the code, generate code for you. I recommend to go with Python because you will be able to do everything. Also because the main books I will refer to during this guide provide Python code to play with. Also because, well, Python is the most popular language today. So again, if you're familiar already with Python, it allows you to go fast. If you're not, it opens many doors to you. There are Tons of resources to learn Python for free online. I put two in the comments below that will be particularly adequate based on what you will need to go further. The first method that is usually presented when you think about causal inference, so to assess a causal effect, is what we call randomized exper experiments. In medicine, it is widely used since a long time. It's what we call randomized control trial. Basically, to assess the effect of a drug, you randomly allocate people to a control and a treatment group, the control group will receive a placebo and the treatment group will receive a new drug. The only systematic difference, if everything has been made correctly, is the treatment itself, allowing to pin down precisely the effect of the drug because you don't have other systematic effects confounded with the drug itself. Now, those methods are also widely used in the industry. They are called A-B testing, and typically allow to test on uh, online platforms the efficiency of an ad, uh, try to pick the right color for a button, the right position, the right wording, and then you can show different versions, for example, of a web page, and see if you have a higher retention, high, most, more impressions, a higher click-through rate, and any KPI that is relevant to you. This is the only part where I don't have one clear source. So I put one chapter uh, as a reference in the guide. But if you have one, let me know in the comments. And if you want to go deeper in this field, let me know as well. However, randomized experiment, control experiments have also weaknesses. In some cases, it's impossible to run randomized experiments. So for example, if you want to assess the effect of pollutions on health, you are not going to expose humans to lethal dose of pollutants right, in a lab. You can do this with rats, unfortunately for them, but you're not going to do this with humans. 
And hence, we can resort to another methodology. So then I recommend you to at least cover the next three quasi-experimental methods to have a good toolbox to start with causal inference. The first model is called the regression discontinuity design. The idea of the RDD is to exploit a discontinuity with the allocation of a treatment. So let me illustrate with a simple example. An important question is to assess the effect of alcohol consumption on health outcomes. The issue is that if you compare someone who is not drinking because they are maybe 10 years old with someone who is drinking because they are maybe 50, you have many differences between the two and you are very far from the parallel world situation. So the difference in mortality between a 10 years old and a 50 years old cannot be attributed to alcohol consumption only. Right? What you will do with regression discontinuity is basically you will exploit the discontinuity of the legal age uh, to drink alcohol. And this is what I've been done in a paper in the US, where basically the authors compare people from 19 years old to 23 years old, so just around 21 years old, and they look how the mortality rate is varying just at exactly as this, at this threshold. Hence, people right below one, a few months before 21 years old and a few months after 21 years old are quite comparable with their life, with their health issues. No other strong discontinuity happens at the time. Or at least that's the assumption. And hence, indeed, as shown on the graph, we can see basically here the mortality rate uh, for each age category at the month level. And we can see that it's the mortality rate for moving vehicles. So it's going down, basically. People learn to drive at this age, get more experience, and they drive more safely. However, there is a very strong and sudden discontinuity at 21 years old, and this might be attributed to alcohol consumption. But of course, you need to dig deeper to understand all the subtleties and to see if this is potentially a valid assumption and valid results. And I let you check the reference below. Note that this video is not a class on causal inference, it's just uh, presenting you my self-study guide with free online resources. Don't expect to understand all those concepts, I just briefly give you the flavor of those concepts and potentially once you finish one chapter you want to, to check the next part of the video and then maybe or at least it should make sense and be easier to understand. Then I suggest also to see, uh, to study a very popular model that is used as in academia and in the industry, which is called the difference in difference model. Here, I will put two book chapters, a short book chapter and then a longer book chapter, as well as an example where I use this methodology for research to assess the impact of chat GPT on Stack Overflow. So basically on the number of coding questions posted online. The last key method that I recommend you is called instrumental variable. And again here in the comment below, you will find a short introduction with an illustration, then a longer in-depth book chapter, and as well a paper that I published where I use this methodology. So it's a good illustration of an additional illustration of how we can use this methodology of instrumental variable. The fifth part will be actually about how to create your first causal inference project such that you can include this in your project portfolio in order to showcase your newly acquired knowledge, but also actually to reinforce your knowledge by practicing with a project on your own. I recommend you to do the following. Pick a question that you think is valuable today for you, for your employer, for the society, and try to answer it with the tools that have been provided in this guide. So of course, this is a bit vast and you need data to answer the question. So in order to help you, I would suggest some data source and some type of question you might be interested to answer. That will work particularly well with this type of models. I will start by going to the quality of the government data set, which is an online data set with thousands of very popular variables used in research, used for policies about the quality of the government, different policy, political factors, but also the environment, and then get some inspiration by looking into this data set and come up with a nice research ID. If you're not sure, you can just give the code book to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to help you find a good research question for a causal inference project. Once you have the data in your research question, you have to describe the data sets to pick the right ingredients, to see what will be the right 
statistical analysis methods to detect maybe outliers, to understand the underlying variation, the distribution through time and space. And to do this, I have put my ultimate guide for exploratory data analysis, which is available in the comments below. Once you have your hypothesis, some data that you have analyzed and cleaned and prepared, you can draw actually your directed acyclic graph. So the relationship between your main variable of interest and the outcome. For example, climate shock on happiness or on GDP. And then once you have your main cause and main outcome, you want to add a few other elements that you have learned in the directed acyclic graph chapter. For example, mediators, confounders, moderators, and so on and so forth. You should have a directed acyclic graph between five and 10 nodes in total. Once you have this, you try to assess the effect of your, your main explanatory variable on your outcome using multiple linear regression. So basically you run a simple regression and then you start including controls to reduce the risk of omitted variable bias, a concept that you should have learned at this stage very well. Usually you have some remaining endogeneity issues, so things that question causality. And hence, this is now the time to use one of your three methods that you have learned, regression discontinuity design, instrumental variable, or difference in difference. Try to implement one of those methodologies. Most likely there will be weaknesses and it will not be ideal and perfect, but that's not an issue. You will learn a ton. It will allow to showcase your knowledge, to assess the limitation of a model, showing again that you're able to understand the pros and cons of those methodologies. And this is simply how it works. It's rarely perfectly the ideal situation. If you want more inspiration about an uh, in-depth example of what you can do, I just uh, included as examples, well, one of my paper, which is very close to what you could do, and a group project by some of my students, which received the same guideline as for, for the project I suggest here in my masterclass. Finally, of course, causal inference is very rich, it's evolving, and you might be willing to go beyond once you already saw those topics. So there are three main things that I recommend if you want to go a bit further with causal inference. First is to see what is the synthetic controls and synthetic diffindiff. The second advanced topic that is really growing at the moment and really exciting is what we call causal machine learning. Here I put two references. One of the two is, is a book that is not free. <laughs> That's the first reference that I put that is not completely available for free online, which is a book by Professor Martin Huber on causal inference. And last but not least, there is also kind of a niche field that might interest you. You want to potentially open this box, which is called causal discovery. And here there is a recent book published by Alexander Molak that is also a book that you have to pay for, but you can follow Alexander Molak online if you want to learn more, in particular on LinkedIn. So that's it for my guide. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see something more in depth or if you need resources for other topics. All the best on your causal journey.